We're dropping the tea about living in Hawaii. The pros and the cons of living in Hawaii. Tropical paradise? Or maybe not just what you thought. So I think it's a little bit about time that someone makes a video that's a little bit of the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly about living in Hawaii. And like a really, really big point that I want to make um, that I think everyone really needs to be aware of and it's not talked about enough. So stay tuned for that. When it suck to make this whole video and then suddenly notice I had something in my teeth the whole time. So the first and pretty obvious pro is that Hawaii has the most incredible nature this world has ever seen. Uh, maybe that's kind of an overstatement, but I certainly think it's incredible. I think being able to have both hikes and snorkeling and swimming and rock climbing, slacklining, kite surfing, wave surfing, big wave surfing, wind surfing, swimming. I can't think of more sports. Um, but being able to have those <laughs> on the same day is just absolutely incredible. I have picked up so many sporty hobbies being in Hawaii, whether it was acro yoga or fire spinning, which is like an indigenous practice. I'm still not quite sure if it's Tahitian or Hawaiian, but a lot, a lot, a lot of outdoor active lifestyle sports and people. I was definitely seeking kind of a, a place where I could reconnect more with nature and Hawaii definitely provided that. It also provided the beautiful company of people who are similar minded with the waking up early, sleeping up early, sleeping up early, what? waking up early, sleeping in early what? and all that kind of stuff. So all that is definitely true. Okay. So got you there. Totally true. If you're thinking of like more mindful living, kind of that kind of lifestyle, I definitely think they have that as well. I remember I actually, I worked at a yoga studio and I remember this woman came in and her bag said, I am here. And the woman who read it was like, wow, you are. And it was just like, oh, this is so Hawaii. <laughs> I could never see this happen anywhere else. So it's also really cool that with all the outdoor nature and all that lifestyle stuff that we just discussed, um, they also don't have many killer animals or snakes, which is a huge plus. Like, I don't know where you're coming from in the world, but most places have snakes, you know, like fucking jackals. Like you got them all, dude, you got them all. And like Hawaii, Ain't got none. But you do have like some scorpions though. The second point is that the weather is super consistent. They have really consistent weather. If you like the four seasons, and I don't mean Vivaldi. <laughs> what are these jokes? <laughs> Dude. If you like the four seasons, like having spring and summer and all this stuff, you're not really gonna like Hawaii, I'll be honest with you. But if you like warm weather, if you're like me, like a little reptile at heart that's just looking to soak in the sun, I would definitely recommend checking it out because I love the fact that it's consistent. Yes, it'll rain every once in a while, but it like rains for two seconds and it goes away. And in those two seconds, all the tourists on the beach pick up their towels and leave. But by the time they're in the car, the rain has stopped. So it's kind of funny. Sorry if you're a tourist in Hawaii. Lol. It's really interesting. Each island has its own kind of weather. And then within the islands, you have microclimate. So like Oahu's weather is very different than like Kauai's weather. And then on top of that, you also have like these areas that are a bit more mountainy or the valleys will get lots of rain. Then the areas that are like more south shore in Oahu won't get a lot of rain at all. So it's really interesting. Kailua is like the windy area. You get lots of rain there. It rains all the time. So yes, things to take into account. Different areas have different microclimates. Another really positive thing about Hawaii is unlike a lot of places on the mainland, you can get a lot of diversity of people. It's just beautiful to learn so much from those different ethnicities and people and their cultures and their backgrounds. I love Asian cultures, like love learning about Asian cultures and I love learning about Hawaiian local culture. And I think coming to a place like that is just an absolute gift. I think there's also really cool micro communities I also wanna say. I don't think micro communities is a term. There's really cool communities in Hawaii, like creative communities, athletic communities, all these different sub-communities, musician communities. Um, and I think the fact that you have so many of those makes it really easy when you move because you're always gonna have opportunities to meet people and connect over similar ground. On that same note of like meeting a lot of people and meeting a lot of communities, you also have like co-working spaces, which if you like are an entrepreneur or something like that. Oh my God, I have to burp, but it, it went away. Oh my God. <sighs> 
I don't know what that was. So basically, if you are like an entrepreneur or something like that, like they have co-working spaces, which is also a really great place to collaborate. Another fabulous point is that you're always just a rainbow away from a smile and a smile away from a rainbow. That was super corny, but you have beautiful animals. You have really cool insects. I mean, if that doesn't totally gross you out. I'll be honest with you, if you are terrified of cockroaches, your place may not want to be in Hawaii. There's a lot of great options for different diets. I know a lot of people who moved there because they were like plant-based, or vegetarian or something like this and they didn't have a lot of variety and you can even like grow your own food in Hawaii like that's something that is pretty common so I think it's really cool like if you are into that like yeah that is a much easier space to do that you have incredible incredible food because of all the amazing culturally inspired restaurants of people you also have like really good fish I had so much poke just poke on poke on poke on poke and it was delicious if just in general you enjoy the aesthetic of you know bohemian and kind of like alternative life and hipster life and just like hippie life and surfer life and all these things honestly there's something kind of comforting about knowing you really love the look of something or identify with the look of something and you see it all around which is about to bring me to my big point, but we're not quite there, so we're gonna get there in a moment. So now let's talk about some of the negative aspects. It is really hard to stay motivated when everyone's just chilling all the time and all the music is like reggae and laid back and all that is fine if you are coming from a background that I think that you're comfortable with that. For me, coming from like an urban area that has a lot of hustle and bustle and just like action all the time, after a while, it felt like paralysis. <laughs> like you're just, you're trying to get motivation and you can't and everyone's just like, this like let's chill today let's grab a couple beers let's go surf the waves like yeah keep it easy keep it chill it's nothing bad i think that's that that is a good quality it's just i don't share that quality so for me like after like two months i, I started feeling that kind of sink its teeth into me and i kind of realized like ah, i need more hustle and bustle like isn't that crazy you just like you dream of bohemia life or you dream of cottagecore life and then you go live it for a while and you're like okay and it can get really tiring and it's hard to get out of with the sun and the heat and the beach and the waves and the sunburn and the chilling and the beers it, it gets really hard to kind of like turn on the electricity in your like body and soul and just like get going so when you're in hawaii you're also going to see a lot of stickers that say keep the country country that's going to lead me to my bigger point but right now what i want to say is that the countryside of hawaii is a lot of hawaii yeah if you're living in honolulu and you need to go downstairs to buy a pen and you go downstairs to buy a pen and you come back home yeah that will take you a minute if you're living on somewhere like north shore oahu that's gonna take you <laughs> a while and to go grocery store shopping and all those things it's a lot harder i used to have to schlep quite a long ways to get my groceries when i lived in north shore it's a hassle buses not reliable infrastructure of roads not always reliable it's normally just like a rural area and then just one road where you either go straight or someone's coming the other way and it's just that. Yeah, so it's really crazy. I think the electricity falls quite a bit. I don't think people are prepared for that. I used to work at the Sunrise Shack on Oahu, North Shore, and when the electricity would drop, we couldn't work. There was a freaking typhoon once, and it was just, it wasn't that bad necessarily. I mean, trees were falling on the electricity thing, so yeah, electricity was running out, but the only place with electricity on that whole portion of the island was Turtle Bay. So I just went to Turtle Bay and worked on my computer as I saw like the typhoon from the hotel but it's it's just really nuts like you don't realize like yeah you're in an island in the middle of the pacific like it's this small and the pacific's huge so it makes sense that things take a little bit longer but if you are coming to hawaii and you do have to have appropriate electricity and you you do expect to get amazon deliveries quicker and better and all this stuff honestly it's just it's not reliable yeah unless you're living in a city it's always going to be a schlub there's not many many houses um because they have like rules and a lot of rural areas which is like you can't have a house taller than a coconut tree which i think is just charming as a as a law it's just beautiful um because of that they don't have many houses which is again leading me to my bigger point but just keep in mind a lot of the houses are old they're small they don't have ac tend to have a lot of cockroaches rust moss just like if you're an insect hater maybe don't move there <laughs> just like i said that there's limited houses there's also limited jobs so trust me it's not the san francisco of work opportunity a lot of people will be like yeah i got a job though really quickly because my job is really in demand but they're not 
really saying if, you know, they got the pay that they would have gotten somewhere else or did they actually enjoy the kind of job that they ended up getting. Things are very different there unless it's in tourism, unless it's in the military. Options are pretty limited, so it's just something to take into account. If you do end up moving, you might have to take into account that you're going to have to get a temporary job for a while and it's not going to be glamorous and you're going to have to work that job while you figure the bigger job out or just wait and see if you can get a bigger, better job. Since we're talking about houses, it's really crucial that I bring in a key key point, which is roommates. You're going to probably have to have them and they're probably going to be insane. So that being said, never move in with someone without getting to know them a little bit better first. I've heard horror stories. It's nuts. I think a lot of people find roommates on Craigslist, on uh, Facebook Marketplace and places like that. I just, I don't recommend it guys. I really don't recommend getting roommates that you don't know ahead of time. There are a lot of crazies in Hawaii. That's fine, but you should not have to deal with that. That is just stressful guys. So try not to, try to get to know someone first. Maybe stay in a hostel before. There's incredible hostels in a lot of the areas there. So maybe try that for a little bit and then consider finding a place once you meet someone. But I would definitely take my sweet, sweet time with a decision like that. The roads, because they are built for like the smallest amount of people. Like it was built for the amount of people that were living there a hundred years ago. Not at all for the amount of people that are living there today. You end up having a lot of traffic on the roads and a lot of issues with parking. That's just something to be said. But if you are going there with a huge expectation for them being like crazy scuba diving, the corals are not in good shape. And a lot of this has to do with the sunblock that people from outside were wearing when they came to Hawaii and they go into the water and then it just hurts the ecosystem. Similar things with people who will go camping and use shampoo and then will use that shampoo over the ocean water and it will go into the system and hurt the ecosystem. A lot of the corals just haven't survived that well over the years. If you go to Hawaii, make sure to respect the land and respect the aina as they call it and, and the beautiful presence of the nature on that island by having the appropriate sunblock, having the appropriate straws, not having too much plastic, things like that. It means a lot more for an island in the middle of the Pacific to have to care about these things because also they really exist on what exists in the water. So it's really important to just kind of respect the, the ocean, respect the aina, the land, and to just wear the appropriate sunblock and care about nature when you're there. Not polluting it, swimming with the fishes, but also respecting the fishes. So here are things that you really have to know before going and we're gonna get to the bigger point. I really recommend if you are considering moving to Hawaii and you're not like military or something like that, give yourself a buffer amount of times in order to just evaluate whether you want to stay there or not. Because in, in our heads and on YouTube, like Hawaii can look like this amazing, perfect place. You're not even taking into account what it's like to live there and go to the grocery store and use the electricity. And I think that in hindsight, it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> what it is in reality is what it is online because if you live there, it's it's very different than being on vacation. It's very different than watching a video. So keep in mind, living there is different and giving yourself an amount of time to really take into account if you want to stay there, if you want to leave, I think will really help you make the right decision overall. Definitely, if in doubt, don't go out. If you're not a good swimmer, don't go into an area that doesn't have a lifeguard. I mean, it's an island, so everything's a beach, but you have to be careful. The currents can be very strong and there can be animals in there that you might not be prepared to see let me tell you that i have been lucky enough to have had other issues i guess in the water if not that one i remember i was on a surfboard once and i saw this huge fish swim under me i was like wait what, <laughs> what? oh my god i was so scared i was like oh my god it's just like half of my surfboard and it just swam under me and i was like so you have to be prepared at all times for anything. I don't think you should be afraid of going into the water. I think you should just go in. It's a little bit more safe and maybe don't go in alone. Go in with people. I think you should definitely try surfing just because you have to. It's it's so much fun. And I think they have a lot of other fun things there like the poi balls and the hula and like, oh, I, I wish I could do like a nice hula dance. I think that's going to be one of my goals. This is just random, but you're probably going to get a lot of ghost stories when you're there. Depending on who your friends are and where you 
camp and stuff like that, but you're probably gonna hear a lot of ghost stories. I think they scare the living crap out of me. So just be prepared. You're gonna hear about like the night marchers coming and when they come, you have to get on the ground and you have to like be safe and all this stuff. Honestly, it's really spooky considering like the history that Hawaii's had. Where I used to live, there was a huge graveyard of around the time of the overthrow. You know, Portuguese last names, all the different last names. It was like this pretty significant graveyard and I would just go by there and like people would tell me like the day before about the night marchers and stuff and you just there the island itself has so much energy in itself that just hearing that and then just seeing something so blunt and 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 historical can be sometimes a little bit spooky if you do go to pipeline and you like go there with your camera gear and you set up and you're like i'm gonna vlog it's gonna be sick pipeline gets really big in the winter and it'll like look kind of small look kind of small look kind of small and then it'll just suck up all the cameras that are really close to the water and like you'll start seeing people like run after their camera gear and stuff like that that just gotten eaten up by the waves so that's something to take into account never keep anything too close to the shore hawaii's waters will surprise you yeah so it's just something to take into account like you just you have crazy waves there and you just can't trust them even when you're on the shore like be with your eyes out there's certain parts of hawaii where i promise you cars get broken into every single day and it is not a joke so if you are with your stuff and you're even going to the beach, leaving stuff on the beach and you're going in the water, it's not going to be there when you get back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to be there. People hide in bushes. They got crazy homeless problems. You think they got other things to do? They don't. Don't keep your stuff visible. Don't keep it visible on a car. People will steal it. Every time I've been on Crouching Lion, the hike, I've always seen a car getting broke into. That's how real it is. And they'll just hide in the bushes and they'll go and they'll like scoop all your stuff in the car punch a little hole in there and leave it and yeah it's it's real and it's really hard and there's like organizations trying to combat it another really cool thing to keep in mind when going to hawaii is that hawaii 5 and ncis often will film in hawaii so you can also check out how you can be an extra on the show which i think is really cool and then if you get a line in there you might get some royalty money which is like pretty sick so that is one really cool thing and then they also have kind of like during the seasons where it's airing monthly you can go and you can watch watch Hawaii Five-0 with like a bunch of people on a beach and like all the main characters or like actors, I guess not characters, all the main actors will like come out and be there. They'll do like a red carpet thing right before. And I think it's like really rad. And they'll often have like in Waikiki like reggae concerts and like all these other things like the Common Kings will come and play and like these awesome bands. It's just such a fun time. So I definitely recommend that. Obviously there's amazing things to do in Hawaii. I made an entire video of it where you can kind of see like each one of the hikes that I really recommend and like what's cool about them so that's really sick there's a lot of awesome parks and national parks there's a lot of really fun etymology stories of how certain locations got their name do keep in mind to keep a distance from marine life turtles are cute but they don't want you patting them okay so definitely keep a safe distance from the turtles it's monk seals all the wildlife just be respectful before i get into the the meat and potatoes of this video it's just that we have kind of grown up now this the younger generation have grown up idolizing influencers and content creators that will go to these places and will flood our feed and will kind of like slowly drip into our minds and make us think wow hawaii the perfect place to live and there's a lot of really true True, incredible things about Hawaii but there's a lot of issues with that and I want you to also be aware that when you see those things that those people their job is to sell you on an idea if they're not selling you a product they are the product and that product for them is the idea of a lifestyle that their kind of character portrays and I so get that that's so fine but I've met a lot of the influencers that I've looked up to from like plentiful soul to Hallie Michelle Michelle I don't even know how you say her name and like it's really fake <laughs> if you ever want me to make a video kind of talking about my horrible experience meeting some of my biggest inspirational influencers let me know in the comments and the younger generations are going to get this more and more in their heads like oh i have to move to hawaii i have to move to hawaii and it, i've had this too but at the end of the day there are people that are really hurting from this there's a huge issue with genderfication which is basically like these people who have grown up in these communities who've born like several generations back whether hawaiian or portuguese or chinese or Filipino. You know, they are not making enough money off their jobs to afford the rent getting higher. But suddenly, like the landlords are aware that you're getting people that have money from Silicon Valley and people that have money from Australia and people that have money from all these different locations coming in and swooping in the rent and they're not able to afford their own homes. And they eventually sometimes have to leave island. And that is 
really, really sad. So it's the unfortunate truth of what wealthier people moving to a place like that is doing to the locals. And because there's an issue, like we talked about with building houses, and it's really important here to mention that it took about a hundred years for the United States to officially put out a statement that Hawaii was indeed overthrown. They were their own country. They had great relations with countries like England, which is why you'll see the Hawaiian flag and you'll be like, oh my God, British. But they they were their own place and they had their own king and they had King Kamehameha kind of come and unite the, all the islands. And unfortunately, when religious missionaries came in, they started contracting a lot of illnesses that their immune systems weren't ready to prepare for. At the time, it got worse and worse and the US kind of swooped in and overthrew the country and they put a gun to Queen Liliokalani's head and said sign over the island and then she was also later on put in a room for like eight months which in her palace like yeah maybe someone brought her food and stuff but I think we've all been through quarantine at this point and the fact that she was in this one room for eight months just until like they finished taking over the island is really really sad so it's fair that a lot of the locals have mixed feelings about people coming to the island but that's why it is more so our responsibility to take into account that these people are absolute gems like i kid you not they're just the sweetest people they're so powerful and they're so kind i love how self-reliant they are the fact that they could go and just like swoop in and get a fish from the bottom of the ocean and bring it up and serve it to their family and bring the extras to their neighbors and live in this very communal lifestyle it's one of the most beautiful things that have survived on this planet and i don't want it to go away and i don't think you do either so it's really important that we keep this in mind and we go and we bring the utmost respect to the aina and the mana and the people of hawaii because they are what this world needs more of and if we just swoop in there and take that away from them they're not gonna have a way to stay there and it's not fair so on that note which is kind of sad the upside is is that you can always go there and visit and see how you feel and maybe see even what you can do for the community and i think that should be the key takeaway from this video is that if you do decide to move to hawaii and you've already clicked on this video so you might be considering it make sure that you're bringing back to the community and not just taking from it because they're such incredible people and they deserve better so if you want to know a little bit more about the main things to do in waikiki and north shore and just the general lifestyle and how that looks make sure to check these babies out is there any point that i didn't touch on in this video that you think i should have brought up or any question that maybe i should have answered and didn't or maybe wasn't even aware of the answer perhaps please let me know in the comments below i really want to know how to improve these videos and i thank you so much for coming by and watching and yes see you guys bye